Video games, we love them just as much as we love horror cinema and literature and when it comes to the many horrors that lurk behind the grainy TV screen buzzing away in a basement late at night there's nothing quite like the interactivity of gaming to deliver the true definition of terror induced hysteria and then obviously the fear of having woken up your entire household plus your neighbours and then trying to explain to them how a pixelated zombie dog leaping through a window at 2am in the morning is reason enough to have called the police. Yeah, whichever way you want to spin it, video game horror has a special special place in our hearts, so let's take a look, shall we? I mean, at the list, not at our hearts. That's very weird. Far too deep. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scariest Channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Video Game Monsters. Roll the clip. Curious amongst you, that clip was from 2006's Silent Hill, based upon the fantastic video game series of the same name, which in Silent Hill 2 depicts perhaps the most terrifying video game creation of all time, Pyramid Head. And it leads us to a very important point, because you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Pyramid Head makes every single one of these lists time and time again, and it's old news, Pyramid Head is terrifying, we know that. So we'll try and keep this list as fresh as possible, and leave Pyramid Head as our most honourable of honourable mentions. Yeah, it kind of goes without saying anyway, so. I guess we better begin. Kicking off at number five, The Infected, The Last of Us. The sound of clickers will terrify you, for good reason, because whether you're Joel or Ellie, and whether you've got a poor quality crowbar or one measly arrow left in your inventory, hearing the sound of a fungal clicker or stalker lurking somewhere beyond a darkened corridor is a horror experience like no other. You see, The Infected are terrifying, and Naughty Dogs, The Last of Us, did a stand-up job at reinventing the whole zombie apocalypse shtick with a wholeheartedly original spin on the genre. But it not only did that, it redefined the very concept of what makes zombie horror in video games so damn terrifying. Given the right circumstances, one clicker on its own lurking behind the shadowed corner of a stairwell is far more terrifying than a horde of sprinting zombies running at you whilst you're spraying and praying to oblivion. Now that's partially down to the fact that the resource management in this game is second to none, and part of the dread comes with knowing what infected obstacles are waiting ahead of you with the prior knowledge that you only have two bullets left in your pistol and only a single health kit to boot. That's not to detract from the fact that the actual design as well as the lore behind the infected is nightmare fuel enough, given the fact that more so than many other zombie apocalypse concepts, this one is kind of rooted in some pretty sound science. The infected in The Last of Us are created from a spore induced mutant outbreak called the Cordyceps Brain Infection. Essentially this vile infection is a rapidly aggressive fungus and once a human is infected by its spores, four stages of mutation then begin. Stage 1 the runners, stage 2 the stalkers, stage 3 the aphid mentioned clickers and stage four the bloaters which if you've played this game you'll know are a different kind of fear entirely i mean yeah as you progress further and further into the last of us the fear that each of the infected bring gradually becomes diminished but there's no denying the fact that the fungal infected are damn terrifying for the most part. Swinging in at number four, Necromorphs, Dead Space. And whilst we're on the topic of mutated and partially reanimated corpses, we have to include what is essentially one of the most terrifying undead hordes in video game history, the Necromorphs. The living definition of science fiction meeting horror and ripping out your throat before anyone in space can hear you scream. If you've played the Dead Space franchise, you'll know how truly terrifying stumbling upon your first Necromorph actually is. And yeah, okay, let's get this out of the way. These guys fall in line right beside the Flood from Halo, and I mean they're pretty much the exact same thing, as well as the Xenomorph from the Alien franchise, as well as the many from System Shock. But in my opinion, the Necromorphs of Dead Space just seem to capture something special. Maybe it's the tight corridors, and maybe it's the lack of methods to combat them to begin with, but whichever flavour or texture they appear as, Necromorphs are a different kind of fear entirely. In Dead Space, how many times do you think you can walk past a seemingly dead body before it leaps up and ravages you with its terrifying Necromorph to teach you the lesson that you needed to know in order to get better at this damn game. From a lore perspective, these alien undead infected parasites are even more terrifying. And when it comes to the brethren moons, the less you know, the better. Again, yes, the concept itself is pretty much the grave minds of Halo's Flood, but the fact that the Necromorphs are essentially a writhing mass of undead flesh whose sole purpose is to find more flesh to kill and consume and then add to the pile, which actually serves to add an even more terrifying aspect to Dead Space's gameplay. In most cases, you can't just shoot these things in the head like the Flood. 
blood. You have to very carefully and very accurately shoot and slash their arms and legs off so they'll slowly stop crawling toward you. And once you think you've got that mastered, a new form of necromorph falls from an air vent and now it's got limbs coming out of its rib cage. Yeah, dead space is terrifying. Next up at number three, Mimics, Dark Souls. And whilst From Software's incredible Dark Souls series is full to the brim with a boatload of truly horrifying entities, dragons with a million moors, giant skeleton warlords that linger in the dark, and councils of kings made from pure shadow, without a doubt, when it comes to gameplay, all of them pale in comparison to the true unequivocal fear of stumbling upon a mimic. And yeah, in a few ways this entry is a little tongue in cheek, or tongue in chest, should I say, but I'm really not trying to pull the wool over your eyes, because for what is essentially a treasure chest, this thing really is the most terrifying monster in all of Dark Souls. For those of you that have played Dark Souls, you'll know how damn difficult it is anyway. I've only ever played Dark Souls 3 and it took me about 4 hours to figure out how to defeat the first boss, and then once you get to Firelink Shrine and you finally think you've got a handle on things, a few hours later you're opening a chest to get some loot, and then you scream in pure terror at the sight of a disgusting giant tongue and a row of teeth munching suddenly on your corpse. You see, the Mimic is an interesting video game creature, and it's one that I was aware of for quite a while before Dark Souls, particularly in most JRPGs like Final Fantasy, where they're easy enough to defeat for the most part. Traditionally, the Mimic is an unassuming treasure chest, seemingly filled with loot, that first appeared in Dungeons & Dragons in 1974. They were put in place to keep the players on guard, just when you think you've got the drop and you're going to pick up some loot, obviously you trigger a monster fight instead. But there's just something about the depiction of Mimics in Dark Souls that really takes the cake. Maybe it's the horrifying way they crawl across the floor, or maybe it's the fact that for 99.9% .9 of this game, you're at your wit's end and on edge anyway, or maybe it's the vile giant tongue and the thin spindly arms and legs. But yeah, Mimics. Those guys, you died. Coming in at number two, Yog Saron, World of Warcraft. And you might be thinking, what the hell, Jack? World of Warcraft, how the hell is this even close to being a horror game, never mind a remotely scary game? And yeah, it's not. For those of you that don't know, WoW is an MMORPG that for the most part is a relatively straightforward video game. There are no mechanics that make players panic in fear, there are no darkened corridors to stumble through. In fact, it's a number crunching game that requires the effort of upwards of 40 people to pull off, and that's probably the most stressful thing about it, trying to coordinate a raid. But when it came to one raid in particular and one final boss fight, even the mechanics of defeating yogg were something else entirely. Obviously, this is a pretty niche pick because not many people would have experienced this raid, but damn. Defeating the old god Yogg-Saron in the depths of Ulduar should have been listed as a horror experience in itself, because it was terrifying. In the incredibly rich and deep lore of Warcraft, the old gods were a race of malevolent entities that were defeated thousands of years ago and imprisoned deep within the core of the planet Azeroth. One of the most powerful of them was Yogg-Saron, the beast with a thousand moors, the monster in your nightmares, perhaps the best depiction of a Lovecraftian entity in modern entertainment. As the final boss of the Ulduar dungeon, the old god Yogg-Saron was set set up to be quite a challenge. And boy was it a challenge. Like with anything in Warcraft, defeating a raid boss requires coordination of up to 20 people, in some cases 40. But during the events of this fight, yogg -Saron would whisper to those individual players about the horrors that were lurking in their minds, whispering voices into your headphones. That's not that scary, right? But as you progress through this fight, you'd be transported individually to strange places and rooms that were familiar to you, the whispering always growing louder and louder. You'd witness conversations with other iconic characters whilst you were meant to be fighting Yogg-Saron's many tentacles and moors, but you'd become so confused as to what you were actually meant to be doing that by the end of it, all you could do is stare at a blank screen of madness with 20 other people hopelessly experiencing the same as they were lost in the many layers of the fight. Obviously, as time went on and the fight became more familiar, this fear became a moot point. If you've played WoW, you'll know that most of the endgame boss fights are pretty straightforward, but Yogg-Saron flipped the damn table, and when you first aggroed that terrifying moor of an old god, it was a video game experience like no other. It's pretty messed up. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the hymn. Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. And yeah, because our number one spot is reserved for a creature that is so damn terrifying in both folklore and in video game mechanics that merely catching the sight of it from out of the corner of your eye as you turn against a shadowed wall with flames licking from your torch is enough to make your hair stand on end. Now, stumbling upon the hymn is a very specific and very brief portion of the endless sprawl of a video game that is The Witcher 3. And yet, for a game that is literally populated with any and every vile creature and creation that folklore and fiction could ever 
could possibly hope to conjure up, the hymn stands out as its most uniquely terrifying experience. Unlike many of the monsters in The Witcher, the hymn doesn't ever outright attack its target, but instead it exists in the shadows near its victim, feeding on the target's guilt, tormenting them to the point where its victim goes completely mad or they take their own life. Although the hymn is only ever featured in one side quest, as well as briefly in the Hearts of Stone expansion, both encounters are equally anxiety inducing. It's a classic horror trope, and it's one that The Witcher 3 managed to capture incredibly well with this incredibly specific creation. And personally, I adore the fact that pretty much nothing is known about the hymn. All we know is that they're a type of spectre, a race of malevolent beings that exist outside the Great Veil, and yet who can interact with our own environment through the torment of individual people. The most terrifying part of the hymn, though, is that after having knowledge of what it is and what it does, you begin to see its image in every shadow. You may be walking past a villager and notice something odd about the shadow they cast. Strangely enough, it has horns. And then you might spot it against the wall as the sun's about to set. You don't know what it wants, you don't know who it's after, you just know that it's there. And that, for a video game, is the classic definition of horror. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Alice for the top five scariest video game monsters. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. Jay Frost says, Your knowledge and appreciation for obscure pieces is a welcome breath of fresh air on a platform full of parrots and listicles. Well, Jay Frost, that's straight to the point, and also incredibly kind of you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to see you're enjoying the content that we're trying to keep as fresh as possible. But it's as Hunter S. Thompson always used to say when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. Well, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear. Hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe button. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You'll be watching top five scary videos. And please, until next time, you take it easy.